Hello, today I have the honour to talk to Andrea Cavalleri from the Max Planck Institute and the University of Oxford, who received the Frank Isaacson Prize for Optical Effects in Solids this year. Congratulations, Andrea. Thank you very much. The citation for your prize is for pioneering contributions to the development and application of ultra-fast optical spectroscopy to condensed matter systems and providing insight into lattice dynamics, structural phase transitions and the non-equilibrium equilibrium control of solids. Could you please describe your work that has been rewarded with a Frank Isaacson Prize this year? Sure, or at least I can try. Uh, let's see. Um, so, I, I let's say that the, the, the scope of the work is to use light at uh, sufficiently high intensities to modify materials properties rather than to just interrogate them. A lot of work has been done in the past to use light to probe the properties of materials. What I would like to do is to change the properties of materials. For example, take a, a material that is transparent and make it metallic, a material that is uh, non-magnetic and make it magnetic, or uh, let's say, so change the collective properties of a, of a, of a material with the light. Uh, to do this, we concentrate on the development of uh, light pulses at uh, long wavelengths, so at uh, terahertz and mid-infrared frequencies where most collective excitations of solids are found, say phonons, and uh, for example, or lattice vibrations resonate at frequencies of a few terahertz. And so we would like to use these pulses, but at strong enough fields so that, the, the, for example, the atoms are being moved far away from their equilibrium positions. And so we can re, re, reconstruct or change the, 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 the constituent properties of a material and, um, uh, yeah, and in this way change the optical properties. So this is one thing that we do. Uh, at the same time, we use... Uh, pulses from, from uh, advanced X-ray sources, like, like X-ray free electron lasers, to, to measure the structure of these driven materials at very short time scales. You have to think that an atom or, or a bond oscillates at frequencies of a few terahertz, which means that the atoms uh, move, or that the time that it takes for an atom to move apart from another is, say, 100 femtoseconds, 10 to the minus 13 seconds, so we use fast X-ray cameras to take snapshots of the position of the atoms at fast speeds. So this is the, we, we, we take movies of the structure as it evolves and then we use light to control it. And so some of the interesting things that we've done have been to, for example, uh, take a material that is not superconducting but that would like to be superconducting and changing what prevents it from being superconducting by, by exciting it with tailored optical pulses. So that's, uh, that's maybe the, 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 most, uh, the thing at least I'm mostly interested in and the thing that people have noticed the most and perhaps is one of the things that has led to this uh, you know, very flattering award that I got. Yeah, so maybe this is a, a good enough uh, explanation of what... Yes, uh, yeah. okay, perfect. Thank you very much. This is very interesting, Andrea. Yeah. Could you please also let us know what you are currently working on to give us an outlook on what we can expect in the future? Many of these interesting driven phenomena that we have discovered survive only for a very short time after the application of a light pulse. And uh, for example, this idea of generating a superconducting state at temperatures higher than one what would normally be able to achieve at equilibrium can only be obtained for, for say, you know, a fraction of a billionth of a second. And so one of the things we would try to do is to, is to stabilize these states in a continuous laser field and maybe make room temperature superconductors in laser fields for long times. So that's one thing. And other things are perhaps uh, uh, just, just looking at new phenomena in the way they could be applied to new devices to store information or to process information in new ways. And thirdly, to use these techniques to learn something about the microscopics of these materials, there's things that often these materials acquire a specific phase, but then there's what we call hidden phases that, that one doesn't see that could be there if one were, was able to perturb the system. And so one would like to look at this in, hidden texture of these materials. So that's, these are only three things that at least are, are very interesting to me. And, uh, <laughs> okay, thank yeah. you very much, Andrea. And again, congratulations. Thank you very much again.